Hi guys, on today's episode of the Arctic Reptile Ranch, we're going to take a deeper look at ultraviolet wavelengths, and we're going to have a look at a lot of the products that are commonly available in the market today to see how effective they are and which ones might be the best for your reptile at home. So get ready and let's start sciencing. Before we take a look at some of the products that, that I have sitting out over here, let's talk a little bit about wavelengths. What does a wavelength even mean? Well, the wavelength is the distance that a wave travels from here, from, a, from here to here. So if we pretend that each of these squares is 100 nanometers, this wavelength, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 400 nanometers. So that tells me that this is just below what you and I can see and it's in the UVA spectrum. UVA spectrum, the wavelength is anywhere from 400 down to about 315 nanometers. You can see as you travel up in the letter of UV, UVA, UVB, and there's even a UVC, the wavelengths get shorter. So UVB is from about 315 down to 280. There's really not that much of a difference here. Now a long wavelength, like infrared, looks like this. From starting all the way through one full cycle to here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If the infrared wavelengths are 780 nanometers and longer, well this is also a wavelength that you and I cannot see. Because this one is 800 nanometers. Anything in between 400 nanometers and 780 nanometers, so anything from here to about here, you and I can see. It's within our eye's ability to see. That's where the visible light spectrum falls. So you can see there's some visible light coming out of here. I can feel there's some heat coming out of here. But we're going to test to see if there is indeed UVA and UVB coming out of this light. Because that's what today's episode is really all about. Seeing which products give you UVA and UVB and how they might be best used for you. We're going to go ahead and start with the ZooMed PowerSun 100 watt mercury vapor bulb. This one claims to uh, give you UVA and UVB. So we're going to use my tester and we're going to see if this does indeed give us UVA and UVB and we're going to mark where it's effective at. How, what the UV index is at various distances. I have it lined up at the top, so we'll go by inches. If you're measuring centimeters, just roughly two and a half centimeters equals one inch. So we'll begin down here about 12 inches away. At 12 inches, we have a UV index of 1.4. So let's write that down. In red, 12 inches, 1.4. Let's say you wanted to give them a little more distance at 18 inches. Well, 18 inches, you can see you're at a 0.7. There's barely any UV hitting that far away. Now, how about at 6 inches? Wow, at 6 inches, we're blazing at 4.3. 4.5 and at just outside of it you can see this thing is giving off a UV index of between 9 and up to 12 I could probably get a sunburn from this lamp if I left it on and close enough to me long enough so what do these numbers mean well 0.7 that means there's some UV hitting, but it's like a cloudy day. 1.4 means it's partially sunny. You got wispy clouds kind of covering up the sun. 4.5, that's telling me it's a nice and sunny day out, almost desert-like conditions. So depending on what kind of reptile you have and where they live in nature, these distances roughly correspond to where you should put it. So let's see what we got at 9 inches. 
2.3. So at 9 inches, a 2.3 is a decently sunny day. It might be a cloud or two in the sky. Uh, you can consider a 0.7. Think of that like a, uh, a deep forest. It, it could be a sunny day out, but the amount of light coming through is uh, just enough to, you know, it's, it's daytime out. So the PowerSun UV 100 watt bulb is what I'm testing, does indeed give us UV. This measures the entire UVA and UVB spectrum from 400 to 280. You can see it right here. So whether it's UVA or UVB, it's going to pick up both of them. So now let's move on to the next light our ExoTerra Solar Glow 125 watt bulb. Something rather fascinating I found in post-production is that as this Solar Glow light bulb heats up, you can actually see a shift in the spectrum of light it puts off from a straight yellow light to the greenish blue colors given off as the various chemicals and molecules in there start to warm up. And now the next bulb that we're gonna test is the ExoTerra Solar Glow 125 watt. I wanted to get 100 watt or 100 watt equivalents all the way across. Unfortunately, the pet store had 125 or 160 watt. So I chose to go with the 125 watt to get, you know, a little bit closer so these can be, so that this can be a better comparison. So we're going to use orange for the ExoTerra Solar Glow. Let's have a look at the 6 inch mark. Now that I've adjusted it, let's have a look at this and see what it's reading at the six inch mark. So at six inches, this is giving me a UV index of 25, 25. So you definitely don't want to have this too close to your reptile. Let's look at 12 inches away. At 12 inches, we're still at 11. That is insanely intense. At nine inches, Nine inches, we're sitting at 16. Even down here at 18 inches, we're still in the high desert. For most reptiles, this UV index is pretty intense and, and very high. So this particular bowl, if you want to put it at a reasonable distance, at 24 inches away, we're just coming down into a sunny day. So this type of bowl could probably be placed in a large enclosure where you have a lot of space between the ground level or where your reptile is and this bulb. Now, this bulb and the last one are also really good at giving off heat. But at 24 inches, there's not a whole lot of heat coming off of this thing. There's some, but this is definitely a very effective UV bulb at a good distance. Anywhere close of uh, most typical vivariums and open type enclosures, your, your tortoise tables, or if you got a big uh, Euromastix table, perchance, anything closer than, uh, than 18 inches, and you're probably going to be doing a little bit of damage to it by giving it too much UV. And just like us, we wear sunglasses for a reason. That's awfully bright on the eyes for some, for a turtle, tortoise, or your lizards. Even a snake, this is definitely not good for a snake. I can't think of a single snake that would appreciate this light bulb. Even though some snakes live in the desert, most of those snakes are nocturnal. So again, this light bulb is good for a great distance and very, very, very effective if you have a desert basking species. So make sure you research your reptile. If it lives in the desert, does it only come out at night or does it actually come out in the early, middle, or late part of the day? That'll be very important for you to know what type of light you're looking for. The next light that we're going to be testing is the Repto Basking Spot Lamp by ZoomEd, 100 watts. It tells us it gives us heat, daylight, basking, and UVA. It has a picture of a radiated tortoise. It has a picture of an iguana. And this looks like a Euromastic, some kind of agamid lizard. And of course, good old faithful bright red bearded dragon. 
let's have a look at how much UV this light is putting off for us. We're going to use a blue marker for this light bulb. We'll start off again at six inches. At six inches, I have zero. Maybe if I move down to 12, zero. So this, as we've established, measures everything in both UVA and UVB. While that box didn't claim to have UVB, only UVA, this light bulb, even at three inches, barely registering. So this bulb would be effective as a heat lamp, but I would make sure that it had a secondary bulb to provide UV for your reptile. We're going to move now from incandescent bulbs and mercury vapor bulbs over to our compact fluorescent light bulbs. We're moving on to our next bulb, which is the Zoomed Reptisun 10.0 compact fluorescent light, 13 watts which all of the fluorescent tubes that I chose are of uh, the compact are 13 watts. And we're going to use blue to document how much UV this is giving off. We'll go ahead and begin at 12 inches. At 12 inches, it's given off some, but I'm only reading 0.3 on the UV index. At 9 inches, we've only gone up to 0.5. And if we wanted to put this bulb super close to our reptile at 6 inches, At six inches, we're finally getting a UV index of one. So you can see that this bulb is an okay choice for say, this might be a good choice for a snake because it's not very intense, but it will still give off some UV. Not the most important thing in the world for snakes, but it can't hurt. Uh, if you're looking at say, a tortoise or a turtle that lives underwater all the time, like a Mata Mata or a snapping turtle or something that lives in a boggy swamp, this might be a good light to have open. Now the water of course is going to filter out the UV, but this is still, uh, or perhaps even a red foot tortoise. At this length, this is probably similar to a red foot what a red foot tortoise, a cherry head, would get when they're in the jungle. Now of course red foots can live in the open plains and in grasslands too of South America making this maybe not the most idea thing, ideal light in the world for really any tortoise species. But I'm sure there are plenty of other lizard species that this would work very well for. Those that live in trees and have a lot of leaves around them all the time. So that might be the best place to put this particular bulb. When looking at this light bulb, you can see it's pretty small. And when you plug it in directly like this, this is all that's really illuminating this particular lamp has a white, it's reflective, it reflects uh, some of the light, but it's not a reflective surface. So what we're gonna do with all of the compact fluorescent bulbs, to make sure we give these bulbs a fair shake, we're not only gonna look at them from a normal top-down fixture, but we're also gonna look at these from sideways using a reflective fixture to see if the reflection increases or amplifies the amount of UV coming down. So each of these lights we'll take two quick looks at, using both methods. The next light we're gonna look at is a store brand, All Things Living UVB. It's another 13 watt. It's considered a desert UVB bulb. And we're gonna use green to mark off where the UV index is at given distances. We'll begin again at 12 inches. So at 12 inches, this store brand is given off 0.7. That's nearly double what one of our name brands is giving off. That's pretty interesting. Let's look at nine inches. At nine inches, we've got a partially sunny day. Face at six inches. At six inches, once again, you're kind of double what that zoom ed light is, two. What we're gonna do when we test these light bulbs with the horizontal, we'll put the numbers below with the same color. So let's move on to our last complex fluorescent bulb the Exoterra. The final screw-in type light bulb that we're going to use is an Exoterra UVB150. This is marketed as a desert terrarium bulb, so let's see where the UV index falls at various levels to see at what point or at what distance this is a desert bulb for your animal. For this bulb we're going to be using dark green. 
Again, we'll start at 12 inches. At 12 inches, it's the same as that store brand over there. 0.7. At 9 inches, well, it's a bit more intense, 1.7. And at a distance of 6 inches, 4.0. The desert range for UV index is above 4. For this to truly be considered a desert light, you would have to have this within six inches of your reptile, possibly closer. Now, that will give them the dosage of UV that they would expect from an animal that's traversing the desert, but it's awfully close. That's a really short distance in most cages. Now, for a lot of the exoteric cages, a lot of times there's not a lot of distance. This might work well as intended. Now we're going to move on and try these screwing lights with the reflector to see if that changes the UV radiance all the way down. We're back and we've switched out the fixture to a horizontal fixture with the reflective surface above it. And already I can see it looks a little bit brighter. Let's start down here at the 12 inch mark and see what we get. So at 12 inches, this ZooMed Reptisun 10.0 is now giving us double the UV index of 0.6 using this type of reflector. Let's move up to 12. Once again, we're looking at about double. And six inches away, we see it's now at 1.7 versus one that it was looking straight down. Let's move on and test that store brand bulb. The store brand Desert UV B bulb at 12 inches is now telling us it's had a slight increase between 0.9 and 1. So it was 0.7, so this reflector is helping this bulb as well. Moving up to 9 inches, and we're reading about a 1.4 versus a 1. And if we move into close range at 6 inches, We're now reading a 2.3. Again, with a UV index of 2.3, we're not quite in the desert. We have to get much, much closer to give us desert UV index readings. You can see as the further you move from it, the less UV you're getting, even with the reflector. Let's finish up our compact fluorescent bulbs with that exoterra bulb, and we'll see what the reflector combined with the bulb gives us at our distances. I have now installed the Exoterra UVB-150, the desert bulb, into the reflector and we're going to check out the UV index at different distances. So at 12 inches away, well again we've nearly doubled it with the reflector. We're at 1.6, actually that's more than double from 0.7. Moving up to 9 inches away, 2.8, so that's a Good increase from 1.7 and if you got a super close cage to the lid at six inches you are definitely in the desert zone you're reading a 5.2 of 5.3 over here this bulb is definitely sufficient to give us some desert UV readings not quite at nine inches but somewhere between nine and six inches we're not going to shift gears away from the screw and style light bulbs that are complex fluorescent bulbs and incandescent halogen type bulbs and we're gonna move over to our fluorescent tube lights. The first tube style bulb that we're gonna test out is a Reptisun T5 10.0 UVB bulb. The T5 high output are marketed as the most intense UV bulbs on the market. So we're gonna see how it actually stacks up using a UV meter. For this bulb, we're gonna use purple. So let's start down here at 12 inches. At 12 inches, I'm getting a reading of 1.9, nearly two. So two is, again, partially sunny day, partially cloudy day. That's it's a pretty good amount of light. And it is definitely more intense than its screw-in fluorescent counterparts. At nine inches, nine inches away, we're at a 2.8. If you put this extra close to your reptile at six inches, well, now we're looking at a 5.4. Set at the appropriate distance, this light is sufficient for nearly any reptile need. 
If you have a red-footed tortoise, you set it further away, about 12 inches. If you've got a tortoise that enjoys more sun or you've got a bearded dragon, you can set it anywhere between nine and six inches away. Of course, you need to have a barrier of some kind. But this will do what you want to do at those distances. So now we're going to take a look at the ZooMed 10.0 UVB in the T8 configuration. Unfortunately, I no longer have the box to this, but it looks exactly like that. But instead of saying T5, it says T8. So let's go ahead and measure how much light this is putting off. This has a similar reflective layer to the T5's fixture. At 12 inches, this one is only putting off about 0.4. So we're going to use the same color because they're a very similar bulb. If we get closer at 9 inches, well, now there's a little bit more coming out of there. We're at a 0.6. And even closer, at 6 inches away, we're at a 1.0, maybe 1.1. I'll, I'll leave it at 1.0. So yes, it is quite obvious to see the difference between the T5 and the T8 style bulbs. The T8 bulbs are a little bit thicker than the T5 bulbs, but they're not nearly as intense as you can clearly see by looking at how much UV is put off at our given specific distances. The final bulb that we're going to have a look at isn't even marketed towards reptiles, but I see a lot of people on Facebook and in forums using this style of light bulb. Let's see how it really measures up with the UV. This final light bulb is another T5 style bulb, extremely thin bulb, with a reflective surface in the fixture like our other ones. Now let's see how much UV this gives off. We'll start like we had before at 12 inches. At 12 inches, this bulb is giving me zero on the UV index. We're going to write that down, zero. At nine inches, and again at six inches, this bulb, that's a T5, just like that bulb, is giving us zero UV. So why is that, you wonder? This is a plant light, and it is indeed full spectrum. It's the full visible spectrum, which is great for plants. Uh, if you want to illuminate your cage with something like this, this is great for illumination. It's obviously very bright, but the chemicals inside of this that get excited and give off their photons, which gives us the various types of light, these don't have the chemicals that give us the UV wavelengths. So this bulb works great for illumination, but it will do absolutely nothing for your reptile to providing UVA and UVB. Again, remember from my last video, UVB is what transforms the cholesterol in the skin into pre-vitamin D. And then the nice warm feeling that we get is what transfers that pre-vitamin D into the real thing, vitamin D. So you're going to see these on Amazon, you're going to see these in stores like Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, and you're going to read that they're full spectrum. They are not the full entire lighting spectrum. They're just the full spectrum of what you and I can see, which happens to be very good for plants. Although plants do benefit from stuff into the IR spectrum. But that's really, again, not doing much for our reptiles, or it's not doing what we want it to do when we're looking for a UV source. Well, everybody, in this episode, we scienced harder than we've ever scienced in any of my previous episodes. I talked a lot about wavelength theory, about how big the wavelengths are, and then we talked about the purpose of this episode, which is how much UV are these bulbs giving off at various distances? A lot of people always ask the question, what's the best bulb? There is no best bulb. There's the most suitable bulb. If you have a really large, almost room size enclosure, you're gonna to wanna to get this solar glow over here. It's gonna provide UV rays at an incredible distance. You saw on my board over here, I went down to two feet away and it was still giving us desert readings. That bowl, that, that's a sun in a tube. You, you can't get more UV output than that. Now, of course, it comes with an energy cost, 125 watts. The power sun is a pretty good bulb. You know, it gave us nice UV readings at respectable distances. You know, a lot of people put their stuff about 12 inches away most of the time, sometimes a little closer. So 12 inches, that's gonna give you a okay sunny day, but it's also, both of those are also gonna give you a lot of heat. 
That other bulb, that Repti Basky bulb, we saw. We have the instrument right here. Zero. And then your complex fluorescent bulbs and your tube lights. It just depends on the setup of your cage and what you can attach or what you can hover above your cage. So my best advice is to, of course, do some research on your reptile's natural habitat. See what kind of sunlight it's getting in its natural habitat and try to replicate that. But it, I do caution you, if you have a desert animal, that doesn't mean that it always needs desert light shining on it. That animal might sleep throughout most of the day and the only light he's getting is coming in through the rocks and crevices where he sleeps. So you may be giving him too much if you say, well, I have a Euromastix, so I'm gonna use a power sun. Well, Euromastix live in holes. I've been to the places where those things live in the United Arab Emirates. I've seen them, they run off. You don't see them in the middle of the day. You only see them in the, around dusk and dawn. You could get one for it, but you're probably overdoing it at that point. So really, there is no best bulb. There's just the best bulb for you. What it boils down to is when you're trying to find a good UV source because you can't put your reptiles outside and give them the natural sunlight, and as we saw in previous episodes, even a nice sunny window isn't giving them any UV. There is no best choice. There's just the best choice for your setup and your reptile. I hope all of you have thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun experimenting writing on the board, and really getting down to the nitty gritty of how light works and how these bulbs work for your reptiles. I hope to see you on the next episode of the Arctic Reptile Ranch. Have a great day.